Hi in this video we are going to see how we can configure connectors. Connectors are used to connect your third-party services like Slack, Trello or any other API or your database with the studio. We will start by adding a connector. Here you can see we have multiple options available. If you want to connect to a third party or your own API you can use the REST API option. Or you can also select one of the various SQL databases as per your need. For now let's start with the REST API option. We will use the example of SendGrid Mail Service Providers API. So I will give this a category name. And next we will add a description here. Now I will give this connector an image and then click on continue. For any REST API integrations, these are the authentication methods that are supported. You can look at the documentation of the service provider, and here for SendGrid we have the API key. So I will select the API key option here. Configuration here is basically what are the key parameters that need to be sent. Here we will give a user-friendly label, and this is the key that will be used for the API call. From the documentation, you can see we have an authorization key as a header parameter. So we will add it here. Here you can select either string or password. If you select password, the key will not be visible when I input it. The target is basically where this key will go in the API call. I will select this as a header since the documentation of SendGrid specifies it as a header. Now here you can add a help text, which can be shown to the user when they're adding this account. So for our authorization key, the user will have to add an API key after a bearer keyword. So if the API key is your API key, the user will have to write bearer space the key. The placeholder is where you can add a hint to be shown to the user in the text box when it is empty. You can give a default value as a fallback and you can keep this field hidden if you provide a default parameter otherwise we can keep this as unchecked. You can add multiple fields that are required to be called in the API. Send grid required only one so I need not add any other. Test configuration is basically a test API that you will have to give. Whenever you are trying to add an account, this API will be called with the requested keys configured above and once this API returns success, your account will be added. Since it is a simple GET API, it does not have any other options but you can have additional options in your API request. Let's click on continue, so we will have to test the API category before saving it. Once we click on the test, it will ask to enter the API key details and post that it will try to validate our API key for the test API that we have given. So here you can see the help text that we have given shows up here and the API key placeholder shows up here. Let me add an API key followed by bearer and space. Since we have selected the key type as password, it is getting masked over here. We will now submit this. So our test API responded with a success message, so we can click on continue and our connector got added over here. The next set is to add an account to this API connector configuration. We will have to follow the same steps that we followed to test our configuration. Here we will give an account name, and this section is the same as we did previously. When I click on submit it will add our account. You can add multiple accounts using this manage account option. Now the next step is to add an API for send grid configuration. We have a send email API that we want to use in our application. We will have to give it a name. Next, select the method as a post method. And this is the API endpoint. So for this we will have to select authentication and then select the account. The post method has a JSON body for this API. I will add a JSON body. So here you can see this is the expected request for the send email API of send grid. There are a couple of dynamic parameters like email that is being wrapped inside double curly braces. So this will create a variable for each of these parameters. These will have a test value and a default value. Most of the time these are dynamic in nature. You will have a default value as empty, however you will have to give a test value to test it. I will give an email address here. I will make this dynamic and mandatory. I will repeat this with all the other variables. So we have another option called advanced. Here we have the dynamic keys that we have will appear here and we can change the user-friendly name that will be shown to the user. 
As shown here field name will be seen here when user is trying to add this connector in their app we can also configure the help text for each of the fields. And the same will be seen below the corresponding field and we will have to make these mandatory and set it up very quickly. Pre-select option can be used to have a dependent drop down which can be used to get some additional information calling another API. We can skip pre-select for now. So our API is configured and now we can test and save it. Here we can see 202 success code which means our request has been accepted. And here you can see I have received an email from myself. You can also see the subject and the body is as I configured the test values. You can see our API here. Now when I refresh this you will be able to see the API that we have just configured. This is our API and we have all the parameters here that we can add values to. So this is how we can add REST API connectors which have API keys as authentication. To know how you can use the API in your application, you can watch the video on that which is there on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.